Muy buenos días a todas las... Good morning, everyone. Today, this is the 184th period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission. This is a hearing to monitor 10 precautionary measures for persons deprived of their liberty in Nicaragua. I would like to greet all the representatives from civil society who are here today um, to conduct these hearings is, since uh, the state won't be present, we will have a first part so that the representatives of civil society can share with us their perspectives. And after that, the commission will have time to react to those interventions. So to begin with, we will give 30 minutes to the representatives of civil society. You can go ahead. Good morning, commissioners, rapporteur of ESCER, Freedom of Expression, and Executive Secretariat. My name is Karma Herrera from the Instituto Raza Igualdad. We would like to thank the commission for um, organizing this hearing and the 10 precautionary measures for persons deprived of their liberty in Nicaragua they are deprived of their liberty for, for political reasons. We will focus on the situation of risk and the violation of the rights of the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures. The precautionary measures benefit 60 persons. 44 of them are still deprived of their liberty for political reasons. Only 17 have been released. The other persons in the precautionary measures are family members, including men, women, and adolescents. We represent 56 of the beneficiaries. These persons were detained between 2018 and 2021 for exercising their right to protest, freedom of expression, and freedom of association. Many of the detainees participated in the protests and many of the detainees were detained uh, by means of a use or excessive use of force. And their physical needs have not been covered. The legal proceedings have not respected due process of law either. None of the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures should be deprived of their liberty. Therefore, we consider that as it has been established by the Inter-American Court in other cases of persons deprived of their liberty for political reasons, the Honorable Commission should request their immediate release. This is the only way to prevent the damages to the right to life and integrity. Uh, the reason why these representatives requested precautionary measures. Instead of Implementing the recommendations made by the Commission and the international community, the state continues to arbitrarily detain those who oppose the government. Over 192 people are detained because of political reasons in infrahumane conditions that are against their freedom and their health and mental, uh, mental and physical health. They are subjected to cruel and inhumane treatment. With regard to the precautionary measures um, referred in at this hearing, so far the state has not complied with the request of the commission. The state has not adopted any protection measure to guarantee the life, the health, and the personal integrity of the beneficiaries. It has not guaranteed access to specialized medical attention or quality attention according to the needs of these people. They have not adopted alternative measures to detention in spite of the context of the pandemic. We don't know if there are any investigations into the facts that led to the granting of these precautionary measures. We would like to highlight that there is a lack of information 
by the state regarding the current situation of the beneficiaries in spite of the request sent by this commission. I would like to give the floor to Georgina Ruiz. She will be talking about the inhumane conditions um, in which the persons deprived of their liberty are right now. Thank you so much. In its resolution to grant precautionary measures, the commission requested the state of Nicaragua to adopt the necessary measures to make sure that the detention conditions are consistent with international standards. However, the beneficiaries are still in a situation of unhealthy conditions and insecurity, and this cons constitutes degrading and inhuman treatment. 42 people are in Jorge Navarro Detention Center, which is known as La Modelo. In World 300 of that detention centers, Jaime Navarreto, Edward Victor Sosa, John Serna, Nicole Diaz, Hensel Ruiz, Gustavo Mendoza, Ernesto Ramiro, Uriel Perez, and Nuestro Montreal are located there. This is a maximum security detention center. Detainees are transferred there in an in an arbitrary way and as a punishment. The cells are two by two meters. They have metal doors and sealed doors. Some of the beneficiaries, including John Serra and Manuel Upira Lara, have been remained there. And when they receive visits, they are handcuffed and their feet also are retained. Are, um, um, retained. We have testimonies that indicate that they have no hygiene conditions and detainees have to defecate and to clean themselves in the cells. Access to drinking water is not permanent. In some cells, they have only access to drinking water for two hours. And some cells only have access to uh, a place with water. Some family members indicate that drinking water was, they could not enter drinking water to the cells. In the cells there are insects, rats, and there are different plagues and they are beaten by these insects. Sometimes people sleep next to the place where they defecate and this increases the risk of suffering diseases. Overcrowding is also a concern. A cell in which one of the beneficiaries is situated has a capacity for 50 or 60 people. However, over 150 inmates are located in the cell. Denis Garcia is situated in a small cell um, shared with several inmates. Uh, this beneficiary cannot sleep on the floor and therefore the person is suffering from lost weight, insomnia and depression. Another beneficiary suffered asphyxiation when um, penitentiary agents spray the cells to prevent the spread of COVID-19 but political prisoners remain in their cells during the spraying. Family members can visit the beneficiaries every 21 days. The family members take basic food, but those basic food are destroyed during the searches in the cells. The beneficiaries also reported that during the visits, they are surveilled by armed officials who write down their conversations. Another beneficiary indicated that the time that he has for his visits is lower than the one that is established. We would like to highlight the case of Mr. Lara, who together with other political prisoners reported having received rotten food. They have only two liters of drinking water every day. Also, we have the uh, food and recreation materials are stolen. They cannot uh, have access to sunlight or to conduct recreational activities. Several inmates 
went into hunger strike to protest for this bad treatment. Then he was taken to a punishment cell and he was handcuffed. On the same day, he was transferred by officials of the special unit of the police to another detention center. He was locked in a punishment cell and he was isolated in total darkness for a long time. In solidarity, other prisoners in La Modelo, including three of the beneficiaries of one of the precautionary measures, began a hunger strike. They were punished and beaten. Family members of Manuel Urbina Lara could see him until May the 20th. He narrated the punishment he suffered and the beatings. And family members could see the injuries on his wrists and ankles. His health was deteriorated. Now I would like to give the floor to one of my colleagues, Alexandra Saladar, who will be describing the situation or the health situation of political prisoners in Nicaragua. This, the situation of political prisoners in Nicaragua is uh, very serious. The commission requested access to health conditions and to be granted the necessary treatment. However, nothing has happened. On the contrary, the beneficiaries have no access to basic medication to treat their chronic diseases. They have no specialized attention, and this increases the risk on their lives. For example, John Serna has suffered convulsions uh, due to the fact that he has a lung disease. He has a shoulder laxation and several fractures and authorities are not uh, providing the meds. On a similar way, Mr. Casas has suffered several convulsions. He, uh, there is one of the beneficiaries who, has, who suffers from asthma. Victor Diaz Perez has several mental health conditions and also issues on the skin. Mr. Ramirez has um, um, blood pressure issues. Jaime Barres uh, has suffered flu and is with a lot of fatigue. Many of these beneficiaries in a maximum security prison and they have no access to health attention and to medication. Mr. Michael Antonio has suffered chronic arthritis be even before his detention, but the situation became worse because of the lack of timely medical attention. And he is under constant stress because of surveillance, activity, surveillance activities. In December, 2021, he was beaten and he is feeling a lot of pain. She, he has tachycardia and uh, her family, his family members have reported this. At least nine persons deprived of their liberty suffer metabolic issues. This is the case of Francisco Pineda, who had a colostomy before detention. And because of bad food at the detention center leads to constant diarrhea. Carlos has um, high blood pressure and has suffered several fractures because of beatings. Manuel Sobalbarro uh, suffers alopecia, fungus on his feet and stomach issues. Then there is another beneficiary who is suffering uh, several stomach problems. And also he's suffering some bleedings. Also he knows or he's suffering numbers of his face. Also, there is another beneficiary who is suffering several issues when uh, eating. Another beneficiaries continue to suffer the results of their violent detentions. Mendoza alienated blood for 15 days without receiving medical attention. Gutierrez, Coñado, and Rivas Perez lost weight and they are suffering dizziness, diarrhea, and this is because of the contamination of water. Lazaro Rivers is still suffering spine pain and hepatic pain. 
and also there are mental issues because of the bad treatment received for over months. There are persons over 65 years old that are detained under these conditions. Three of these persons are precautionary measures beneficiaries. They present high blood pleasure, asthma, um, arrhythmia, allergies, and other issues related to COVID-19. Also, we have persons that have skin issues, including Ernesto Antonio Ramirez. This is due to the lack of health conditions in the cells and the lack of access to water. These are conditions that worsen their heart and stomach conditions. There are also similar situations for Mr. Calderon who has skin allergies. Family members have indicated that persons deprived of their liberty for political reasons have suffered psychological issues. The lack of prison rules, isolation for long periods of time, the lack of access to food and water, acts of torture and bad treatment to which they are subjected. All this creates anxiety, depression, and other mental diseases that worsen the situation of the beneficiaries. For example, Luz Bache has reported severe depression, while Victor Diaz and Kevin Solis have presented hallucinations. Also in the case of Kevin, uh, he is extremely slim and he has fungus in his hands and feet. We are concerned about the situation of malnutrition because there is a limitation to access to food. Also taken into consideration the context of the pandemic, the commission requested the state the possibility of adopting measures alternative to prison, but this measures have not been taken. We are concerned about the situation of the 29 beneficiaries who suffered COVID-19 or related symptoms, but they have not received the adequate medical attention. Due to the lack of implementation of these precautionary measures, we are seeing the damage to personal integrity. And there are two beneficiaries who are at hospital since last year. This is the case of Lisandro Castro, 59 years old, who is in bed without speaking because of a stroke that he suffered while in detention. Also, Justo Rodriguez, who has been released, is paraplexic due to a stroke and because of the lack of attention received under custody. We are concerned not only about the deterioration of the health of persons deprived of their liberty, but also we are concerned about those persons who have died and some beneficiary, some detention, uh, some people in detention have suffered irreversible damage to their health. We are requesting measures at the different instances, at hearings, at trials, at pre-trial stages, but so far we have received no positive answers. That is because penitentiary authorities do not receive the judicial orders and sometimes they do not comply with those orders. Judicial authorities indicate that the jurisdiction belongs to the penitentiary authorities and the penitentiary authorities only say that they only receive orders from the judiciary. I now would like to give the floor to Karina Sanchez, who will be talking about the situation of women beneficiaries. The repression since April 2018 has been generalized, systematic, and profoundly patriarchal. This is why one of the main objectives, targets, has been uh, women defenders. This has been evidence uh, due to the uh, registry of attacks on women defenders that shows that from 2020 to 2022, there have been more than 4,000 uh, attacks on women, which is 4.7 aggressions per day. We identify arbitrary detention, sexual violence, threats, illegal searches, uh, slander campaigns, and constant police harassment by police officers or paramilitary officers that uh, attack these defendants. Right now, there are 18 women political prisoners who has been uh, the target of many attacks on them and also on their family members. 
uh, among the beneficiaries, two of them are women. Women political prisoners are in deprivation of liberty that are not consistent with uh, human dignity, lack of water and sunlight conditions that difficult uh, get and sleep, lack of uh, reading material and clothing. Also, sexual attacks have been systematic uh, against political prisoners, especially women, which leads to serious impact to their integrity and differentiated risks. Since 2018 to date, there are at least 44 sexual harassment or attacks against defenders and activists, but also this figure does not correspond to the reality because there is under registry of this type of cases. Political prisoners do not have access to specific health uh, conditions related to their sex or gender. For example, gynecological uh, health, uh, specific uh, hygiene elements, assistance of chronic diseases or uh, access to trans uh, health assistance. There is a constant demands on this uh, women defenders and their family members and representatives. And despite of this, Carla Escobar faces gynecological issues uh, and depression without any kind of sanitary support. Maria Esperanza has had to be uh, assisted urgently due to asthma, high blood pressure and difficulty to walk, which has not been uh, addressed duly uh, with due diligence. Also, they share cells with other common prisoners, and this has led to physical attacks against them, which are happening with the collusion and motivation by penitentiary officials. Penitentiary conditions that political prisoners face, specifically in terms of medical assistance, are the evidence of the intent to punish them for being up opposition members. They lead them to be uh, at risk of death. I leave the floor to uh, Carlos from Colectivo Nicaragua Nuvonca Mas, who will speak about attacks on family members and uh, released political prisoners. Torture in Nicaragua continues to be a systematic and generalized practice, which exacerbates the situation of vulnerability and lack of defense of political prisoners. During the last six months, they have been victims of beatings, threats, death threats, or uh, their children have been taken away from them. We know that some beneficiaries have been hanged from doors with handcuffed at the penitentiary centers. They are beaten with political guard, with uh, police guards, with sticks and hands. They also have been isolated from their family members for long periods and from the exterior world without any access to any kind of news, re reading materials or religious materials. Some beneficiaries are uh, subjected to isolate isolation for long periods, even with extenuating questionings in inhumane conditions. For example, Gustavo Mendoza Beteta has been in maximum security cells since the last six months, completely isolated. Adele Garcia, a common prisoner, told him that because he was a political prisoner, he had to uh, remain at a corner looking down. Many of the beneficiaries suffered physical attacks during the last six months. In March, Steven Mendoza was beaten by multiple guards of La Modelo Political uh, Penitentiary Center. And after the precautionary measures were issued, uh, Lazaro Rivas Perez was taken out of his cell and was beaten savagely, kicked on the floor. Also, in the case of Kevin Solis, there were many public denouncements of the reiterated physical and mental attacks on him as to the prolonged isolation he has been subjected to, 
with the campaign let's save kevin due to the seriousness of the of the injuries and tortures the defense of many of the beneficiaries has submitted re, uh, appeals to get granted alternative measures and to have access to medical assistance however these resources are not efficient beneficiaries continue to be in the same inhumane conditions without any medical or health assistance the same inefficiency has been for the cases of um, challenges and appeals which have not value the serious situation of the beneficiaries. Family members are also victims of mistreatments when they visit them. We have uh, seen excessive cropping specifically for uh, women and girls on their breasts, on their genitalia. They are forced to take pictures and video. This is humiliating and invasive of their privacy. We also see harassment at the houses of the family members and repression such as cyber bullying and harassment, which has forced many of these people to exile. We have also noted uh, limitations to leave the country even when this is due to medical causes. The situation of the released persons is not much uh, more favorable. They continue to be victims of political pro uh, persecution harassment on their houses, on the part of police agents or paramilitary uh, members. This affects their families and limits them from uh, carrying out their own activities. Even this led to one of them to uh, go into exile in 2022 with one of her children because her husband was released in 2020. Uh, all of this leads to what we have called civil death. I give the floor to Carmina Orba so that she may uh, expose our request. Due to the above, we, we request the commission to one, ask Nicaragua, Nicaragua to release beneficiaries immediately, to order the state that while the bureaucracy is taking place, to to guarantee the integrity on the life of the beneficiaries, particularly the immediate access to health uh, assistance and meds to facilitate contact to family members and lawyers at least once a week and to guarantee dignified conditions of uh, deprivation of liberty. Two, to urge the Inter-American Court to adopt provisional measures in in different measures adopted in favor of Michael Antonio Arce and many other persons, such as Solis, Manuel Urbina, and Lara. Also to urge Nicaragua so that one uh, delegation of the Inter-American Commission may enter the territory to oversee the implementation and effectiveness of the measures. Four, to issue a public communique on the specific situation of the beneficiaries on the lack of medical assistance and medications and the conditions of detention, as well as the conditions of isolation and lack of communication and torture and mistreatments to which they are subjected to. Five, to recall the state its obligation to not ex execute uh, attacks on the participants of these hearings, the beneficiaries and their family members. Now we will uh, show a video that shows the testimony of one family member of one of the beneficiaries. Thank you very much. I'm the mother of a, a former uh, political prisoner of the regime of Ortega. My son was uh, kidnapped on, 20, on the 26th of June in 2018. He was sentenced for crimes he didn't commit. He was subjected to torture, psychological and physical torture from 2018 until February the 27th of uh, 2019. He was in cells of punishment since September in 2018 until February 2019. 
we know the the cruelty of one of the most uh, corrupt and strong regimes in Latin America. We are the witnesses of the scope of the dictatorship, which persecutes those who oppose it, but also persecute their families. I was persecuted and harassed by the police of Ortega's administration and paramilitary members. I was uh, there was an issue, uh, an issuance of a of a warrant to capture me, and I had to uh, exile with my children. Officials of the penitentiary center La, Mo La Modelo left at my parents' house. Uh, my 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 son, but this was not the end of the story. The persecution harassment was expanded to the members of my family. The house of my parents was uh, searched and they tried to burn it down twice, which led my son to take the decision to uh, exile. He left the country uh, hidden because he was uh, ser searched. He uh, arrived at Honduras where um, paramilitary groups persecuted him. The, the scope of the Ortega's administration goes beyond our country. In 2019, two peasants of Nicaragua who opposed the dictatorship were murdered. They were exiled in Honduras, Edgar Montenero Centeno and his uh, son. And on July the 13th, in the same circumstances, peasant Francisco Sobalvaro was also murdered. In total, more than 30 Nicaraguan persons has been uh, murdered in Honduras. And due to this persecution, my son had to go to Guatemala and then to move to the United States where he is uh, right now. The fear continues because many uh, torturers of the administration are living in the United States. Also, he wants to come back to our nation, but that desire is blurred when we see the statistics of political prisoners who have been incarcerated once again. There have been 45 released persons that have been incarcerated once again. These numbers reflect the risk, the continuous risk that we face, those who are the uh, opposers of the regime, the risk of being uh, captured or murdered. This dictatorship not only affects the rights of the Nicaraguan people, but also infringes the rights of Nicaraguans outside of the national territory, beyond our frontiers. One of the rights that have been taken away from my son is the right to have a passport. Uh, migration authorities have denied that right to my son. Members of my family are right now subjected to persecution and threats in Nicaragua. And we also could speak about all the rights that have been infringed or suspended to, as regards myself or my family. And evidence of that is that we cannot receive correspondence because we are being denied, denied that right as well. The message that we want to convey is that the provisions of the regime does not do not limit to the territory of Nicaragua, but actually go beyond the borders. Their aim is to infringe, to, to take away all rights that we have for the sole reason of being opposition and thinking differently. Muy bien, muchas gracias a la sociedad Thank civil. You to civil society organizations. Um, you uh, used some additional minutes, but you were able to um, share this important testimony. Now it's the time for the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights to participate for 30 minutes. I would like to give the floor first to Commissioner Esmeralda Arosemena who is the country rapporteur for Nicaragua. Thank you, chair of this hearing. I would like to apologize first. I am really shocked. What's happening in Nicaragua 
is something that has no explanation at all. I'm really surprised by each of the presentations made by civil society representatives. I know that they are here representing the beneficiaries of an important number of precautionary measures that we are monitoring today. What can I ask when I have heard that any action requested to the judicial system so that judicial authorities are aware of these situations and circumstances faced by persons deprived of their liberty We have the their detentions that are arbitrary, but also they are beneficiaries of the precautionary measures granted by the American Commission of Human Rights. But as you have said, there is no response. There is no effective response. There is no response at all regarding matters that are so essential, such as the life of people. And when I'm talking about life, I'm talking about their physical integrity, their mental health, their psychological health, their dignity. They are being so humiliated. They are being threatened, tortured. There is not a single word to describe this and the reality that Nicaraguan people, Nicaraguan families, and persons deprived of their liberty are experiencing. However, the Commission believes that it's important to evaluate together any degree, any possibility of agreement with a state authorities to at least get some answers or at least to communicate what's happening. I have written down all the information that you have provided us with. And I'm sure that the commissioners and my colleagues at the Inter-American System of Human Rights will be trying to assess our positions and the actions that we can take in this regard. I would like to know more whether in these evaluations that you are doing, whether you have been able to identify how many times you have requested an answer from judicial authorities or from police authorities and from penitentiary authorities. We need to have a list of all these actions that each of the organization has taken to obtain a response from the state. Why am I saying this? Because precautionary measures are aimed at reaching agreements in order to find answers to these issues. So we would like to have detailed information about those actions so that the commission 
can take action. I think that the issue of health is fundamental. And I would like for the special rapporteur on economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights to work together with the commission to issue a press release that identifies this health situation. We would like to have more detail on the actions that you have taken, and the answers that you have not obtained by the state. I also would like to know something else. You've mentioned this, but I would like to know more about all the actions done in the judicial system and the results of those actions. Why? Because this is a way for the commission to identify new elements. And also because we are now evaluating what is happening with the implementation of the precautionary measures. Thank you, Commissioner Estuardo. And sorry for my presentation that is rather emotional. I have had some issues to control my emotions today. Thank you, Commissioner Esmeralda and Rapporteur for Nicaragua. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Joel Hernandez. My colleague, Commissioner Esmeralda, and her solidarity is shared by all those who are here today. We are all full of frustration and anger because of the situation that is happening in Nicaragua, the serious situation of deprivation of liberty faced by political prisoners in Nicaragua. These political prisoners have de been detained just because they use their right to freedom of expression and for raising their voices in a country where all democratic spaces have been closed. This is the fifth year as commissioner of the IACHR. And the state of Nicaragua is again absent. We've seen in recent years several regressions in terms of the cooperation of the state with the OAS and with the ICHR in particular. I went to Nicaragua with Antonia Urrejola, former commissioner and former country rapporteur in May 2018, a month later or a month after the beginning of the social protest. And we started then the work of the Meseni. I could witness the serious situation in the country and the situation of deprivation of liberty. We visited La Modelo Detention Center and we visited the El Chipote Detention Center. In July 2018, as rapporteur for persons deprived of their liberty, we requested the permission of the state to come back within the framework of the MSNI to visit these detention centers. Since then, uh, we have not been able to visit political prisoners in Nicaragua and persons deprived of their liberty as part of the social unrest in Nicaragua because of the denial of the state. But I am convinced that the only way to revert this situation 
is by making this situation visible. This hearing is another strategy to communicate the serious situation of human rights in Nicaragua. And I think that the work done by civil society organizations and by international organizations, by the Office of the High Commissioners, of the High Commissioner of the United Nations and the Inter-American Commission is very important. We've been documenting the situation of human rights of persons deprived of their liberty. There will be a time in which we will have transitional justice in Nicaragua. And this record of violations of human rights that you together with the ICHR have been creating will be very important in order to reparate, to repair the victims. I would like to reiterate what you already know, the commitment of the commission to continuing doing its work according to its mandate and taking into consideration the tools that we have. Precautionary measures are one of those instruments and the follow-up of precautionary measures is our responsibility. We are committed to this through the section of precautionary measures led by Fernanda Dos Anjos, who is here today. So I would like to highlight how important it is to continue to document this situation, to make this situation visible and to raise our voices together uh, to revert this serious situation of deprivation of liberty faced by political prisoners. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Carlos Bernal. Thank you, Chair. I would like to second two things mentioned by my colleagues, Commissioner Arosemena. I admire you being rapporteur for Nicaragua in these difficult situations. And also I would like to say that I admire Joel Hernandez for being Rapporteur for persons deprived of their liberty today. And I would like to thank civil society organizations for denouncing these serious human rights violations against persons who have been deprived of their liberty for political reasons just because of exercising their freedom of expression. This cannot continue to happen in this region at this point in time. I would like to know to second what Commissioner Hernandez was saying. It is necessary to document these violations, not only to promote the actions of international community, but also to think about the future when the rule of law is restored or when there is a transitional justice process in the future, these violations should be documented so those victims are recognized and repaired. And finally, I would like to say that the commission and the other international organizations should keep their efforts to open a communication channel to protect the rights of beneficiaries of precautionary measures. This is a paradox for the commission and for other international organizations on human rights. They have to open communication channels with a regime that it's promoting human rights violations. But that's the only way to find short-term solutions to these desperate situations that have been presented to us today. 
And I fully agree with Commissioner Arosemena with on something. And maybe our rapporteur on economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights can also make a contribution. A possible channel of communication could be to seek some solutions regarding access to the right to health. Thank you so much. Now I would like to give the floor to our special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Thank you very much, Commissioner and Chair of this hearing. I also second the shocking feelings and the concern expressed by the country rapporteur and other commissioners as regards the circumstances that have been so clearly uh, presented with so much work uh, with this, uh, all this data and documentation. Thank you very much for doing that, because since the crisis uh, started in 2018 and we visited Nicaragua, I remember having been there with Commissioner uh, Joel Hernandez visiting the penitentiary centers, and we noticed, we identified a very serious pattern in terms of the right to health. Back then, we noted it not only when, as regards uh, incarcerated persons after uh, demonstrations, but as regards the penitentiary population uh, in general, and as regards the population who wanted to receive medical assistance after demonstrations. In our first report, we made specific recommendations in terms of uh, health assistance, and also uh, specifically in terms of mental health assistance to the whole population that are being affected by the demonstrations. This pattern has worsened, especially with uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, specifically as what pertains to the uh, political prisoners. All the data that you have submitted at this hearing, I request you that you send it via writing to the commission. And of course, dear Commissioner Esmeralda, country reporter, you, um, you will be able to work with the special rapporteurship on economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights. And we hope to have to issue uh, something specific on the right to health and also to the right to uh, drinkable water for persons deprived of their liberty. Working with the commissioner, uh, Stuardo Rallon, because it's, it's not even describable what happens to this type, uh, to, to this population. And also the difficulties suffered by the family members. We are very much aware of all the things that they are suffering due to the fact that they have their family members in these circumstances, and also the powerlessness that they feel and that we share. I would uh, like for you to send this information and to ask you, what other types of actions have been attempted with other international uh, organisms that could help, that could be useful for the Commission to identify strategies that may make a difference on the situation of deprived persons? Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, Soledad. I give the floor to our uh, Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Rapporteur Pedro Vaca. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to be here. And I thank the Commission for convening such a conversation, which is extremely important because we see the seriousness of the information that has been uh, provided. It's also a call to continue working to provide protection as uh, the mandate of the commission allows us to. I wanted to share with you some reflections. The infringement, the cutback on this uh, rights is fear and terror, I would say, in the circumstances. It's also uh, conveying a social message on what entails thinking differently. And 
what has been presented today is a horizon for all the Nicaraguan popular uh, population. So I second uh, the, the call to uh, release all persons in this situation, also the uh, compliance with these uh, measures. And I fear that this may, may not be uh, on its way to normalization. So the defense of human rights and to maintain documents is key so that international uh, bodies can work to defend human rights uh, situations. I recognize your work and the cost because it's not only personal, it's a social, it's a family cost. It's a very high cost to defend all this situation. So our recognition, because uh, this is the space to do that. Um, there is a measure to silence persons uh, as we see it from this special rapporteurship. This is not effective because as time goes by, the claim of guarantees are still in force. So the, the aim of uh, curtailing liberty has failed here, but we can we must continue working with such an important work for the future of Nicaragua. Each minute, each hour, each day that those persons are deprived of their liberty uh, worsens the failure of the state. And we are very much aware of, of that. I wanted to thank the opportunity for thanking the team of the executive secretariat in terms of precautionary measures because processing this information, all the technical work behind it shows such the high commitment and we wanted to, to share our acknowledgement. And I wanted to conclude that the lack of uh, compliance with uh, with the observance of international uh, obligations as an expiration date. This is going to end at some point and the special rapporteurship will be available to help to establish the rule of law and to defend human rights in Nicaragua. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Special Rapporteur. As Rapporteur for persons deprived of their liberty and to uh, fight torture, I would like to express my condemnation of the facts that are arising in Nicaragua. Deplorable detention conditions. We have heard about uh, very harsh testimonies on torture acts as well, which then leads to harassment towards family members of those who are detained and those who are the beneficiaries of these precautionary measures. The, the absence of the state today at this hearing prevents us from comply with the monitoring of the 10 precautionary measures. That is, within the system, besides being able to hear the testimonies, if the state were to be here, this hearing would have us as the commission to uh, closely monitor those precautionary measures. And that absence obstructs the functioning of the different mechanisms to protect human rights. However, in the face of that obstruction that we are seeing right now, I would like to express the commitment on the part of the whole of the Inter-American Commission. The plenary of the commission is very much aware of this topic and our commitment is to fight with all the mechanisms at hand to be able to make visible this situation and then to demand, to request the cease, the cessation of this uh, infringe, infringement of human rights, which is constant. 
Also, I want to second what my colleagues have said. We have uh, noted down your requests and your and the information they have submitted. Of course, the petition to issue a specific press release on the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures is something reasonable, of course, because it would allow us to in the face of the absence of the state and the isolation and the refusal to engage in dialogue, it would allow, allow us to make publicly visible a, a sort of monitoring of those 10 precautionary measures that are not being complied with. Also, I acknowledge the bravery of the organizations by uh, of the civil society. We know that when democratic spaces are shut down, there are setbacks, there are uh, attacks on those who have the, the bravery to, to express their opinions. At the beginning, our colleague Commissioner Esmeralda expressed their uh, surprising uh, feelings. And as Commissioner Hernandez said, this is a feeling that we all feel. These are testimonies that cause us uh, pain, but also serve to reinstate our commitment. The commission will be the support of such a brave fight that you are waging against this uh, human rights violations. This was uh, my comment that this is the conclusion of the Inter-American Commission's intervention. Now we go to the next stage of this hearing and I would give the floor to the civil society organizations for 20 minutes so that you may react to our comments. I give you the floor for 20 minutes now. Hello. Yes, go ahead. You may uh, distribute your own time. Thank you. I would like to reply to the question by Commissioner Arasamena in terms of the the resources uh, uh, submitted. The documents are more difficult to draft. We tried to submit, actually we submit, we have submitted um, briefs before judicial authorities. And what we faced, as we have said before at this hearing is that despite the fact that there may be uh, measures to have penitentiary uh, detainees uh, be assisted, they do not receive that medical assistance. We know that political prisoners report that they, this is not the case, that they are not given basic medicine to meet their needs. Also, generally, we would like to mention that not everything that we say here today is not it's not reality there are many things that are happening at penitentiary centers that we cannot report we cannot uh, know due to fear because family members are also forced to sign letters in which they expressly refer to the fact that they are in good health and that they will not resort to any space to make any complaints to show what is happening. And this is a threat. They may be uh, prosecuted under the, this repressive laws that have been recently um, passed. So this also closed the channel to do anything to defend their own family members. They, they, their right to make complaints are curtailed and they cannot defend the physical and, and mental health status of their family members. So 
family members themselves cannot exhaust all mechanisms in their own benefit. We can provide information on the on the briefs that have been submitted and the ex extension on the measures. And we can also uh, report on the efforts made to achieve the medical assistance that should be given. We see this at the penitentiary system and the police system, which do not allow the defense to, to submit these briefs. When we want to exhaust the administrative channels, these spaces, the systems say that they do not have the authority to do so, and they name, they appoint someone to receive those documents, but that person is never available. So the defense are forced to stay the whole day at the outside at the doors of those facilities and their documents are not received because the appointed person is not there available. So part of the efforts are limited even to submit the different appeals or briefs. Thank you. I give the floor to Gisela de Leon. Thank you, Alejandra. First of all, I would like to uh, thank the work that the Commission has been doing to make visible the situation in Nicaragua, which we believe that should be sustained, maintained the situation as you have seen at this hearing continues to be uh, serious. And particularly, I would like to call your attention on one of the topics that we uh, presented during our presentation, which is the detention conditions for uh, political prisoners must be considered as torture since they are not subjected to the same conditions uh, as the rest of the penitentiary population, access to food and water are limited. Also, I would like to go back to what Commissioner Bernal said about the need to open dialogue channels. We would, we think it's essential to guarantee minimum life conditions for the deprived persons deprived of the liberty due to political reasons. And finally, I would like to point out that as commissioners have said at this hearing, it's obvious that persons are, these persons are detained due to political reasons. So we would request the commission to, on top of urging the Nicaraguan state to guarantee the minimum detention conditions to urge them to have them be released because none of these political prisoners should be at their situation. They are deprived of their liberty for the sole reason of exercising their own rights. So we request the commission to pronounce itself in that sense. The only thing that will guarantee the rights of the, of the political prisoners is their immediate release. I give the floor to my colleague, colleague Karina Sanchez. Muchas gracias. Thank you, uh, for especially to the Inter-American Commission for keeping your commitment and to allow us to have this important space. I would like to reply the question asked by Soledad about what can be done. I think that's important that the Commission can improve is coordination efforts with the universal system of human rights, especially through the creation of an expert mechanism uh, on human rights, which was created in March this year. Their mandate will supplement the efforts made at the regional level, such as the HIA promoted by the Inter-American Commission and the OAS, but this expert group has also a specific mandate, especially on gender aspects. We believe that this is very important to see the specific impacts on women deprived of their liberty and also uh, on persons uh, or gender diverse persons. So we can uh, 
guarantee that these groups are represented in future transitional justice processes. Now I would like to give the floor to one of my colleagues, Aileen Cruz. Thank you for this space. We would like to request the special rapporteur Soledad Garcia Munoz, especially we want her to uh, pronounce on the health situation of persons deprived of their liberty who have chronic diseases and those who have developed diseases as a result of this arbitrary detention. And also we would like for her to pronounce regarding the health situation during the COVID-19 pandemic. And also we would like uh, for her to pronounce on the lack of access to food and water, because this is a way of torture and of violating their personal integrity. We also, we would like uh, for the special rapporteur to address the conditions uh, to which uh, persons of private liberty are submitted, subjected to because of political reasons. Thank you. Since we have time, I would like to echo one of the requests we presented in our petition. One has to do with a request for precautionary measures presented uh, for provisional measures for several of the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures that have been already granted. The precautionary measures have not been effective so far and we know that this is because the state of Nicaragua is not respecting international protection mechanisms but we believe that uh, the granting of provisional measures by the court could uh, force the state to take measures also we would like to repeat our request so the commission requests that there are no retaliation against those who are participating in this hearing but especially we want that there are no retaliations for those persons who are deprived of their liberty especially We are here to we are here to hear from you, Carlos. With regard to the impunity around torture acts, it's important to say that traditional authorities uh, have quit or have resigned to their duty to uh, provide protection measures and. The state is not investigating on its own merits the facts and the acts of torture. Thank you so much. I don't know if anybody else would like to take the floor. And if not, we'll be adjourning or we'll be concluding the intervention of civil society organizations. We are reaching the end of this hearing. We have some minutes for the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. I would like to ask my colleagues if they would like to take the floor. Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I would like to uh, make a comment on Sahil's request. Uh, so that we uh, take into consideration Article 63 of the rules of procedure of the Commission to guarantee that those who have participated at this hearing are not subjected to any type of retaliation by the state. I think that this is something that should be mentioned and the commission should pronounce and should indicate this. Thank you so much, commissioner. Effectively, 
given uh, the commissioner's intervention, I would like to say that Article 63 of the Rules of Procedure of the Inter-American Commission establishes that the state should grant protection to those persons who provide information, testimonies, or evidence of any nature to the commission at a hearing. The state should not retaliate against them or their family members for the statements that they made before the Inter-American Commission. I don't know if anybody else would like to take the floor. If not, I would like to give the floor to our special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Thank you so much, Commissioner and Chair of this hearing. I just wanted to say that we have taken down the requests made by civil society organizations, and we are working together with the MSNI and with the country rapporteur um, to uh, issue a press release, please, uh, we insist, send us all the information that you consider relevant. And in addition, I would like to say that we have pronounced several times that Redesca and the Commission has pronounced uh, to show our concern regarding health aspects in the context of the pandemic. We know that Nicaraguan health professionals have been laid off, they have been persecuted, and they have suffered the consequences of the pandemic. And I would like to recognize the importance of the precautionary measures mechanism uh, its coordinator, Fernanda Dos Anjos, is here. And I would like to recognize the importance of this mechanism, as Pedro Vaca was saying. And I would like to second Pedro. We hope that political prisoners are released soon. Thank you so much, Rapporteur and Chair of this hearing. Thank you so much. If there are no further interventions on our side. Before concluding this hearing, I would like to thank all of you and to recognize you for being so brave and for providing us with so with this information that is so information. We have taken notes of the information that you have provided us with during your interventions. We commit to continue to make visible the dramatic situation uh, experienced by Nicaraguans and especially the beneficiaries of precautionary measures. And in our pronouncements as a commission will point out clearly these conditions of detention, the conditions of torture, and the detentions, we will denounce those detentions and we will demand the release of detainees and political prisoners. I would like to thank you all. I now would, uh, will adjourn this hearing. See you soon. Thank you so much. Gracias. 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 Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias.